Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel. We're back here again today. Today, we're going to be reacting to this Mufti Mank talk speech. And uh, inshallah, we can get a little Imam boost from it or a big Imam boost, inshallah. So, yeah, not much else to say. I don't, I don't really know what he's talking about here. It's titled, uh, A Sin Will Always Be a Sin. Uh, but nevertheless, Mufti Mank usually comes with some uh, pretty good stuff. So, I thought we'll just uh, do a little reaction to it, so let's check it out. First, before we get into the video, brothers and sisters, I'd like to take the opportunity to remind you that Allah tells us in the Quran, who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and does righteousness and says, indeed, I am one of the Muslims. Brothers and sisters, I'm introducing a shirt that I designed to inspire and encourage you to spread the message of Islam to those around you, inshallah. These shirts are 100% cotton, so they're both comfortable to wear, but they also have a simple design that serves as a great conversation starter, an invitation to those around you that are perhaps curious about Islam, providing you an opportunity to share the beauty of Islam and the truth of it with others and receive the blessings and rewards as a result. So I invite you to wear this t-shirt with pride and let it be a reminder to always strive towards giving da'wah and sharing the message of Islam with those around you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. My beloved brothers, my sisters, when Allah Almighty created Adam alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam was not a baby, he was already a grown adult. And Allah had instilled with him all the natural qualities of man. Unfortunately, shaitan came to him and started influencing him to do that which Allah Almighty had told him not to do. In order to achieve this, shaitan began to promise him things. You're going to be very wealthy, meaning you're going to own everything. Yet he was already in a part of paradise known as Jannatul Ibtila which is a special garden that Allah had created in order to place Adam and Hawa. May peace be on them. Uh, I thought that uh, Iblis promised uh, Adam, peace be upon him, that he would uh, be immortal. I'm pretty sure Mufti make there so that he would be wealthy or something like that, but I'm, I'm not sure where he's getting that from. So Allah Almighty, in his divine wisdom, allowed shaitan to influence Adam alayhi salam, knowing that he already told Adam what to do and what not to do. The main thing was actually the warning by Allah Almighty not to eat from a certain tree. Allah Almighty told Adam and Hawa, may peace be on them, do whatever you want in paradise. Or in this garden, it's called a Jannah. Jannah in Arabic also refers to a garden. That's why we say the gardens of paradise. May Allah grant us Jannah. Amen. So, but Allah says, don't go close to this tree. And Allah says, watch out for shaitan. He's always been jealous of you. He's always been problematic. And be careful that he does not influence you. Unfortunately, you know what happens with all of us? Sometimes we know this person is not genuine. They might have jealousy, hatred, and so on. And we allow them into our close circle. And we listen to them. And they begin to influence us. They make us hate those who are good sometimes simply because they've conned us about who those people are. How many times do people who don't know you hate you simply because someone told them something about you and they haven't even breathed the same air that you've breathed, subhanAllah. Meaning, they haven't even come close to you. They haven't even seen you. You already hate a person because of this preconceived idea. Someone conned you. Give them a chance. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. So shaitan comes and says, you know, eat from this tree. I want to show... Uh, Mufti Mek's voice is incredible. I don't know if any of you have seen a video of his doing Adhan. Wow, Mufti Mek has a surprisingly beautiful voice. Uh, SubhanAllah. You ...to a tree that if you were to consume from its fruit, you would actually live forever. You wouldn't die. There would be nothing known as death. And at the same time, you would have... 
ownership or kingdom that would never deplete. So these were two things that man generally inclined to. If I tell you, there's a deal, a million rands. I say, what's the deal? I tell you, brother, it's so easy. By this evening, you can have it in your pocket. Don't tell anyone. Oh, what is it? You want to know? You see, <laughs> why? Because it's money. As much as we say, we should not incline towards wealth. Allah has created within you and I an inclination towards wealth. But he warns us to not allow your love for wealth to increase or to oversee the love that you have for me. To exceed the love you have for me. I'm allowed to love anything I found on earth on condition that it is within which Allah has ordained. I can't allow myself to do something displeasing to Allah to get something that is pleasing to me. Wow, that's a powerful statement. Mm. Whether it pleases me or not, if it displeases Allah, I'm going to control myself because I'm a believer. I came wow. from Allah. I'm here on earth to please Allah and I'm going back to Allah. That's a believer. Discipline. What is Islam all about? Wallahi, it's about rules and regulations that will govern the way you shall live your life so that you earn the pleasure of Allah. You will have the success of this world. Even if the people on earth don't think you're successful because their level or the point that they consider success has nothing to do with real success. Hence, on earth, when you see people having a lot of wealth, having a lot of material possessions, people say that man is extremely successful, but they forget that he can't sleep at night. They forget that he's not content at all. They forget that he's got issues that he can't even solve. So Allah says, the success that you will attain by doing things that I have ordained shall not only be the holistic success of this world, but it will go through with you into the hereafter and eternity. That's Allah. So Adam alayhi salam, shaitan conned him and made him incline beyond the pleasure of Allah to something. Now we all have inclinations. Allah's created within us inclinations. We like certain things and we dislike certain things. We incline towards certain things and we don't incline towards certain things. What are some of these things? Can you tell me? What do you incline towards? I check the young guys all smiling. Mashallah. <laughs> What's going on? Mashallah. What do you incline towards? Let's say you incline towards the opposite sex. Natural. Allah's created it naturally within you. The inclination towards the opposite sex. It's a natural, uncontaminated inclination. Shaitan didn't play with it at that particular point unless it goes beyond what Allah has ordained. But it's there. You're inclined. It's, it's natural. It's pure nature. That's what its Muslims call it. Pure nature. What is the pure nature? I'm inclined. Towards what? The opposite sex. Are you allowed just because you're inclined towards something to just go and have it? The answer is no. I'm inclined towards money. Can I just go and pinch and steal when I don't have it? No. I'm inclined towards nice things, a good smell and a perfume. If I can't afford that Narciso Rodriguez, then so what? I'll smell it when someone else puts it and that's it. Or the Oud, let's call it Oud and Misk rather than the Rodriguez and everything else. Piekada, as they say. Hey, yo. I think I've ripped that guy apart. Allah forgive. But to be honest with you, the point I'm raising is inclination itself does not mean you have to act upon it. That's the thing. Because from the very beginning, when Adam alayhi salam inclined because of the devil's contamination and his persistence, when, he's, when the devil succeeded for a moment to... Lower the guard of Adam alayhi salam. What was his downfall? He acted upon an inclination beyond the pleasure of Allah. I don't care what you're inclined to. For as long as you do not act upon it, if it is displeasing to Allah, here is your success. There it goes. You follow what we're saying? It's a very deep statement. It is very deep. It's, he's uh, almost summarizing Islam uh, in, in what he's saying here. And this was one of the first big realizations I had that led me to Islam was that it's not so much about, it's not, it's almost not at all about what I want. It's more important to focus on what does God want and, uh, and to follow that <clears throat> because otherwise 
your life is going to be uh, just sort of this never-ending chase of following your desires, and one, one desire leads to another desire, which leads to another desire, and then you do that a whole bunch of times, and then eventually you die, and um, and it's it's all pointless. It was just a, a pointless chase. Uh, whereas if you if you submit to God, you're actually going to have a better life uh, in this world. And then also, once you die and you have to face God, uh, you won't have so many things to be ashamed about and to be judged for. So, hmm. Mashallah. And it's applicable until the end. Today, you have people telling you, I'm inclined to this, I'm inclined to this wall, I'm inclined to the tree, I'm inclined to a rabbit, whatever. I don't, you know what? You've got to make sure what is your mind. Firstly, don't allow its contamination. Number one. Number two is, if you do have an inclination towards the opposite sex, for example, like I do, and I won't lie to you. And I'm sure you all are smiling here, which means you do, right? We're nodding our heads. Mashallah. Thank Allah. It's something that's good. But what are you going to do with that inclination? Hmm. So here comes Nabi Muhammad sallallahu and he tells you, if you incline towards something that is displeasing to Allah and you held yourself back, Allah rewards you for holding yourself back for the pleasure of Allah. Wow. Whoever intends <laughs> to commit something sinful that is displeasing to Allah, you have an intention, you want to do it, you feel like doing it, you incline towards it and you say, ah, 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 ah. no ways. I'm not going to do that. No ways. Why? It's displeasing to Allah. Allah says, for you is a reward. We're going to call you on the day of judgment to reward you. Why? You held back for the sake of Allah. The same applies to your anger. We're all inclined towards getting upset when something happens that is upsetting. Someone swears you, someone does this to you, someone mocks at you, someone has cheated you. It's natural to get upset and that upsetness might become a little bit of anger. And it's okay, you got slightly angry, but did you allow it to get out of control? When the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, La taghdab, la taghdab, la taghdab. Don't get angry, don't get angry, don't get angry. Process what has happened in the correct way as a believer. And don't allow your anger to overtake you because when you allow anger to cloud your mind, you begin to do things that are displeasing to Allah. And you say things that are displeasing to Allah. It eclipses your anger and it becomes an issue of the crime you committed. How many people, you're so angry and you end up punching someone. Now you're sitting in prison because of violence and public disorder. But whose fault was it? The judge is not interested in whose fault was it. That guy just told you, stupid. And what happened? You got so angry, you punched him. That was the issue. If you looked at him and said, hmm, you look like the one who's actually stupid. It would probably upset him more than he might punch you, isn't it? <laughs> um, especially when you're in Bosman. <laughs> my brothers, my sisters, the point I'm raising is be careful. Not everything that your heart wants should you actually jump for. If you can have something in a way that is pleasing to Allah, you will go through that channel and have it in a way that is pleasing with Allah. If there is no way to achieve what you're inclined to through the pleasure of Allah, you will abstain from it for the pleasure of the same Allah. And you will earn a reward for your abstention. That's what it is. Because today people are committing crime in order to say, no, but I wanted it. That's why I took it. The other day we saw people walking into a jewelry shop, Muslims, walking into a jewelry shop and stealing jewelry just because they were inclined towards it. Subhanallah. You see diamonds, you see, mashallah, you know, chains and gold and silver and whatever, perhaps inclined. But when your inclination is beyond your connection to Allah, you've got a problem. You've got a major problem. Another thing, Adam alayhi salam ate from the tree. He paid the price. He sought the forgiveness of Allah. He did not justify it to say, no, it's okay, man, come on. What's wrong with this? He never justified it to say, because I'm inclined towards eating from the tree, it's okay. How can the Lord, the most merciful, be so merciless to not look into my inclinations and not allow me to consume or eat from the tree when it's, I'm inclined towards it and so on? Hang on, don't forget, Allah created you. He knows what your natural inclinations are. Allah created you. He knows which way you are supposed to be heading. Anything that is not as per that comes from shaitan. No matter what the world says. So Adam alayhi salam himself, he knew that this is not my original self. This was something from the devil. What did he do? 
As soon as he ate from the tree, he felt ashamed. I shouldn't have acted upon this inclination of mine. I should have not acted upon it. I should have held back the fact that I acted. I consider it sinful because I'm a believer. I'm a Muslim. I consider it sinful to act upon this inclination and eat from the tree. When it was shaitan's contamination, I should have held back. So immediately he says, him and Hawa, they both said, Rabbana valamna anfusana. Oh, our Lord, we've wronged ourselves. That's the first step you need in order to purify, to cleanse. No, oh, I'm glad he mentioned that. You know, a lot of people get stuck there. That's what I've noticed. A lot of people get stuck in the shame. Oh, I've done this bad thing. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Uh, Allah's never going to forgive me for this. Oh, I've sinned so much. I've sinned. It's like, it's important to go through that phase of, of actually feeling shameful for, for anything wrong that you've done. But uh, you have to use that pain as uh, energy to repent. That's the, that's the key. You have to take the step towards that next phase. I think uh, Mufti Mek is going to go into that here. Inshallah. To go back to Allah. Otherwise, you start worshipping shaitan. Imagine had they said, Oh Allah, we don't care. According to us, <laughs> you told us you're so merciful. So I'm sure you'd allow us to continue to consume from this tree, even though you told us not to do it. Because you know what? We were inclined towards it. Where did this inclination come from? From you? No, it didn't. Allah says, this is from the devil. Subhanallah. This is from shaitan. And Allah says, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانُ قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ The verse is clear. Shaitan did waswasa. What is waswasa? He whispered. You know what's the whispering of the devil? You hear it in your mind. It comes and contaminates your system. Your thinking becomes clouded. So Allah tells you every day, fulfill your prayers. Every day, seek protection in Allah from shaitan the accursed. Every day, watch out. How does the devil come to you? The devil will come to all of you and try to protect yourself. And if you fall into committing something that Allah has declared prohibited, immediately seek the forgiveness of Allah without trying to justify your deed. Hmm. Then, if you committed it again, because shaitan came to you again after some time, again seek the forgiveness of Allah. But don't you dare justify it. Some people do bad deeds. They go, I give you some examples. They might go and watch pornography, for example. They say, no, but it's, it's okay, it's halal. You know, I'm not seeing the real thing. What, what are you talking about? All this justification <laughs> is distancing you from Allah. Just say, oh Allah, I was wrong. I seek your forgiveness. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to be strong. This shaitan who's come to me, I really would like to tackle him and I'm going to prove to you that I'm not going to do this. Allah says, on the day of judgment, we're going to call you to reward you for abstention. Abstention. That's why for a mu'min, we are taught, do good deeds, you get a reward. Guess what else we taught? Don't do bad deeds, you get a reward. Subhanallah. I'm getting a reward for sitting. And my mind is working. My mind is telling me, do this. Whether it's on your phone, or whether it's to get up and go and see someone and commit adultery and fornication, or go and gamble, or go and do drugs or whatever. My mind is telling me, and it's so tempting, and I say, Astaghfirullah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. not going to do that. It's all happening in my mind. Allah says, for you is a reward. Do you know why? Your abstention is a sign of your connection with us. Subhanallah. Mm. Are we connected to Allah, my brothers, my sisters? Are we connected to Allah or do we follow what the globe is teaching us today? You incline towards something, go do it. You only live once, YOLO, <laughs> as they say. You only live once, YOLO, my man. That's why when they greet you, they say, yo. <laughs> why? Because that's part of the low. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease. May Allah <laughs> grant us right. ease. This is a very important subject because it applies to everything that man inclines towards. The rule is a blanket rule. You're inclined towards something. Number one, you will have a reward to abstain from acting upon your inclinations if they are in the displeasure of Allah. Number two, if that inclination is within the pleasure of Allah, thank Allah and go and do it. For example, your five daily prayers. If Allah inclines you towards the good, that's something good. That's why, what is the dua we make? Oh Allah, 
Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman. Make beloved to us iman. We want to be mu'minin. We want to be believers. Habib ilayna al-iman wa zayyinhu fi qulubina. Beautify it in our hearts. O Allah. Wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuka wal-isyan. O Allah. Make detested to us disbelief and sin and transgression. Make it Make it disliked to me. So naturally when you love to pray, you're looking forward to the next prayer. And wallahi, there are many people like that. A lot of the believers are that way. You love to pray. So what happens? You enjoy it. I'm coming. Thank Allah. Oh Allah, you help me. I came to the masjid. I'm sitting. Every time you're granting me the acceptance to be in the first saf, to come early, to enjoy, to spend a little bit more time, etc. Oh Allah, I thank you for it. Allah says, you know what? It's a sign of your connection with us. So thank Allah. Now shaitan is jealous because he sees you coming every day. He says, you know what? You're better than all the people behind you. You're a top man. You're reading five salah. They don't even read five. So you start thinking, I'm better. I'm better. That better was the first crime of the devil. Ana khayrum minhu. He told Allah, I'm better than Adam. You created him that way. You created me this way. Hey, it's got to do with Allah. Allah tells you and instructs you. If you follow the instruction, you're close to Allah. If you do not follow the instruction, you are far away from Allah. Connect with Allah. You know why? You're going back to Allah. That's why. A believer believes, I came from Allah, I'm living for Allah, and I'm going back to Allah. That's a believer. I am here today to remind myself and yourselves, we are going back to Allah. So many people have passed away. Marhum Haji uh, Rafiq Richards, wasn't he with us just now the other day? Subhanallah, what happened to him? Allah grant him Rahma and Jannatul Firdaus. And Allah grant all the marhumin of this community, Jannatul Firdaus. And Allah grant the marhumin of the Ummah, Jannatul Firdaus. Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus when we go back, my brothers, my sisters, prepare for the day by not, full, not acting on inclinations that are considered sinful in the eyes of Allah. It does not mean you're inclined towards something, you act on it. No. And protect yourself and understand where shaitan is coming in from. Don't justify some sin that you're engaging in. Just say, look, Ya Allah, I know this is haram. Not justifying it. I need your forgiveness. The minute shaitan makes you justify it, the door of repentance begins to shut. Why? Are you going to seek forgiveness for drinking alcohol? Thinking, ah, there's nothing wrong. It's just a little bit. I'm only having a cup, man. Only one cup. It's not doing anything to me. How on earth could you arrive at that? There are people today who justify that drinking a little bit is okay. I drink social drinking. Go check on social media. On their profiles, believers are saying social drinker. What do you mean? What do you mean? You should be ashamed as a believer to advertise a sin that you're committing. My beloved brother and sister, if you are engaged in something that is wrong, don't go advertising it because the hadith says, people will continue to achieve the goodness from Allah for as long as they do not openly and proudly commit a sin. When you become a mujahir, a person who commits an open sin, the doors of that tawbah become more difficult to open. Although doors of tawbah are open up to qiyamah, I cannot, up to the end of your life, I cannot change that. Allah's mercy. Allah says, Inna Allah ta'ala yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Allah will accept the tawbah of a worshipper for as long as they don't get to the point of gargara. That's the last point before you die. So there is always hope. But remember, the minute you justify things, a young lad told me yesterday that where in the Quran does it specifically say that it's haram to drink alcohol? I told him it's worse than that. Allah says, فَجْتَنِبُوهُ All intoxicants, stay far away from them. He says, but that doesn't say it's haram. So I said, son, <laughs> you're going to come to me tomorrow and tell me, where in the Quran does it say this castle lager is haram? Why? Because you want the name now. If this brand is not in the Quran, that's it. I can swipe this one. How? This is sufficient. Go and look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They understood it clearly. But when you want it according to your terms, you must know shaitan's got a grip on you, man. He's got a grip on you. He's making you justify it. So they start drinking and saying, no, oh, where does it say that? It says it. We are believers. Take from your scholars. You have the scholars here in your own masjid. Make use of them, respect them and understand the reality. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, I didn't even realize the time flying. But at the same time, I must say, the world is moving, progressing, changing. 
But the deen of Allah remains the same. The rules and regulations, the do's and don'ts will never ever change. Remember that. So when Allah Almighty has prohibited something, just because the whole globe might be engaged in it, it does not make it right. It doesn't. And if the whole globe is not interested in praying, it does not make it such that we are now allowed not to pray because everyone is not doing it. No, you remain steadfast. بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ كَمَا بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا When Islam started, it started with a small number. And one day, it will go back to that small number of people. Subhanallah. In the interim, there will be masses who will enter the fold. May Allah keep us steadfast on the deen. Say Amin. May Allah keep our children on the deen. May Allah bless all of us. May Allah protect us from the weird inclinations of the dunya today. And may Allah Almighty protect those who are inclined towards that which is transgression against Allah, not to act upon those. Amen. And my brother, I repeat once again, and my sister, if you're inclined towards whatever it may be that is displeasing to Allah, and you abstain from acting upon the inclination, then remember, Allah will reward you for that. I just remembered to end the example I started with, to say we're all inclined to the opposite sex, right? Most of us have just gotten married once. Am I right or wrong? Right? There are some of the brothers and sisters, perhaps who've married more than once, maybe because of divorce or polygyny or whatever else it may be. But for as long as there was a proper nikah, your act with your spouse is permissible. The minute you go outside of that, it's no longer permissible. If you've fallen into it, number one, seek the forgiveness of Allah and acknowledge that you are wrong. Tell yourself, I was wrong. What I did is wrong. Oh Allah, I'm at your mercy, forgive me. Then you are still within the mercy of Allah. But the minute you try to justify and say, no, it's okay, it's fine. I've heard some weird justifications, really weird. I don't want to mention them here because some of the youngsters might start getting confused, you know, or they might say, hey, that's a lack of loophole, you know. <laughs> but there's some weird things people come up with. It's shaitan. Just admit you are wrong and tell Allah, Allah, forgive me. I want to be strong. Let me not do this again. There are some people from amongst us who have never married, whatever the reasons are. Boys and girls, men and women, and they grow older and they haven't been married. I'm sure you know some of these, right? They may die never ever having acted upon the inclination of attraction to the opposite sex simply because they could not regularize it through nikah. For you is Jannah. For you is paradise. You held yourself back for the sake of Allah your entire life. Whatever the reason was, Allah knows it. And you did not engage in sexual relations with the opposite sex simply because there was no way of regularizing it in the eyes of Allah. And you abstained and you protected yourself until the day you met with Allah. For you is Jannah by the will of Allah. I'm talking of the opposite sex. <laughs> and I know many of them and you know them too if you think about it. Imagine. May Allah Almighty protect us. If that is a natural inclination that you protected yourself from acting upon because you could not regularize it within the pleasure of Allah, imagine if there is an unnatural inclination and you protected yourself from acting upon it for the pleasure of Allah, you will also get a similar reward. May Allah Almighty forgive our sins. And may Allah Almighty strengthen all of us. Wallahi, this talk that I've given today is very deep. Only if you understood what I said. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina MashaAllah, that was a great, uh, that was a great speech. And like I said, towards the beginning, she is really summarizing a, a large element of Islam. This, this idea of restricting yourself, um, based on what Allah has deemed good for us and what's, what Allah has, has deemed bad for us. And, and not doing those things that uh, Allah has restricted us from doing. Um, <clears throat> or not restricted us, but um, 
in, in, instructed us not to do, right? So yeah, this is a huge part of Islam. It's a huge part of Islam. And this is um, maybe the hardest part of it as well. This is why This is why it's... Um, to me, this is why Islam commands respect of, of so many people. Like you see a lot of Westerners recently in the uh, cultural zeitgeist, if you will, on social media and stuff, you know, admitting that they, even though they don't believe that Islam is the truth, it's commands some kind of respect because there's so much discipline involved. Like um, you see people that are, are famous some people are, are famous, but they're also good practicing Muslims and they don't party. They don't drink alcohol. They, they don't do any of this stuff. And because they have so much discipline, they have so much iman, they have, they have faith in, 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 in their deen and in their creator. Whereas with other, you know, major religions, you, you, you don't see as much discipline. And I'm not saying that all Muslims are perfect because we all know that's not true, but I'd say there's a lot more discipline in Islam than in the other major religions, at least from what I can see. Um, and it it all comes down to this: what what Muthi Mek is saying in this in this in this talk, and the principles that he just explained there. Um, great talk. I love watching Muthi Mek. He he gives deep topics in a personable and relatable way. And he also throws some humor in there. So, uh, mashallah. May, may Allah grant him Jannah and all of you as well. And may Allah bless you all generously for watching this video with me. And inshallah, this boosted your iman, gave you some knowledge. And inshallah, we will see you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.